season of kidney diseases today we are going to talk about kidney stones in my first video in the season as i discussed the anatomy of the urinary tract the kidneys right and left out of which tube comes out called the ureter ureter joins our urinary bladder where the urine stores so urine comes from the kidney from the ureter into our urinary bladder where it stores before we pass it through the tube called the urethra. Stones can happen in the kidneys or the ureter or the bladder or even the urethra. Today we are talking about kidney stones which mainly happen in the kidneys and the ureters. So what are the reasons of developing kidney stones? This I can summarize under two headings. There can be other very uncommon reasons but there are two main reasons. One reason is buildup of certain salts, so certain crystals, as you know, salts are made out of crystals when our body levels are very high. So whether it is because we have an underlying medical problem which builds these salts in our body or we are eating or drinking food and drinks which are very rich in these salts. The second reason is repeated kidney infections. Now let's discuss what are the common type of kidney stones. What salts can become crystals in our kidney? So the commonest type of kidney stones, over 90%, are made out of calcium. And the commonest salt of calcium is called calcium oxalate. There are other types of calcium salts which can also form stones like calcium phosphate, calcium malleate. However, they are a bit less common. Normally, there is a balance between calcium and oxalate in the body. So calcium oxalate lies in a nice balance. So equal amount of calcium, equal amount of oxalate. However, certain foods that we eat, the oxalate content in those foods is very high. Like potato chips, if we are eating excessively, like spinach, chocolates, peanuts, etc., etc., beetroot, they all contain excessive amount of oxalate. So that balance of calcium and oxalate becomes uneven. So more oxalate is passed in the urine. And those people can form calcium oxalate stones. Second common variety of kidney stones are made out of uric acid. There are few conditions in which our body produces excessive uric acid. One is gout as you know, in which the joints get inflamed and the crystals of uric acid forms and they pass in the urine. The second condition or second situation in which uric acid stones can form is when patients are undergoing chemotherapy. The reason for this is, as you know, chemotherapy kills cancer cells. So when the cells are dying, they produce a lot of uric acid which comes into the blood and that blood when it goes to the kidneys, that uric acid is filtered through the kidneys into the urine. And this excessive uric acid that is being produced during chemotherapy, the kidneys can't deal with and sometimes can form stones. The third bit uncommon type of stones are struvite stones. These can reach quite large size. As I discussed in my video on urine infections, that urine infections are more common in women Hence, these stones are more common in women because women get more urine infections as compared to men. And people who get repeated urinary infection, they are predisposed to developing struvite stones. Another very uncommon type of kidney stones are called cysteine stones. And these stones happen in a condition called cystinuria in which patients pass too much cysteine in the urine and they can crystallize in the urinary tract to form stones. So how common are kidney stones? It is said that one in 10 people or 10% population will have kidney stones. People who have got a family history of kidney stones, they have a high risk of developing kidney stones. And obviously 
Individuals who had previous kidney stone, they are at a higher risk of developing kidney stones. It can happen at any age, more common overall in men as compared to women. Although, as I showed in my previous slide, that certain stones like struvite stones are more common in women. However, overall, more common in men. Commonest age is between 20 to 50 years. However, can even happen in premature infants. So things that can increase the risk of developing kidney stones, dehydration if we pass less than one liter of urine a day, obesity, surgery for obesity, like gastric bypass surgery, inflammatory bowel disease, like Crohn's disease, colitis, etc. Diet rich in salts and proteins, like if you're eating too much meat or too much salts, that can increase the risk of developing kidney stones. Other risk factors for developing kidney stones include hyperparathyroidism. This is a condition in which we can develop small tumors in our parathyroid gland, which lie next to our thyroid gland in the neck. They can increase the risk of passing more calcium in the urine and cause kidney stones. Certain medication that we take, and some of these medications are quite commonly taken, like diuretics, which are water tablets. Some of the water tablets, not all, can cause a high risk of developing kidney stones. Tablets taken for epilepsy, which stops the seizures, some of those medications can increase the risk of developing kidney stones. Certain antacids that we take, over-the-counter medication, which contains a lot of calcium, can increase the risk of kidney stones, especially if they're taken in large amounts and if we are very dehydrated and we don't drink enough water with those antacid tablets. So what are the symptoms that we can get from kidney stones? When the kidney stones are very small, they can pass from the kidneys into the urine out of our body without causing many symptoms. However, when they do cause symptom, then the main symptom is pain. And this is excruciating pain, extremely severe pain, called renal colic or ureteric colic. This happens because the stones start moving from the kidney down into the ureter and into the bladder. And that movement of stone causes severe pain. The pain classically is in the kidney angles, which is along our back next to the spine in the angle between our spine and the rib cage, which is called the kidney angle or the renal angle. And it radiates down into the groin and in men into the testicles and sometimes inner side of the thigh as well. And the pain comes and goes, but when it comes, it lasts from a few minutes to several hours and extremely excruciating. It can be associated with sickness because the severity of the pain, the patients feel sick if the kidneys are blocked because of stone, then fever and chills can happen because of the infection in the kidneys. When the stone moves, then blood can appear in the urine. If the urine is infected, then the urine can become very smelly and the patient wants to pass frequent small amounts of urine. What tests can be performed to diagnose kidney stones? After examining the patient, the doctor might want to do some blood tests to check for the kidney functions and also the levels of certain electrolytes like calcium, phosphate, etc. to make sure they are the cause of kidney stones. Urine tests can be done to check for blood and infection in the urine. Main tests done to look for the kidney stones are ultrasound scan, MRI scan, CT scan and in some countries and places, still intravenous pyelogram is used and retrograde pyelogram. So what is the treatment for kidney stones? Not all kidney stones require surgical treatment and many can be treated, especially small ones, by drinking plenty of fluids, taking painkillers when the pain is quite severe, controlling gout by tablets called allopurinol, so uric acid stones don't form, Water tablets called thiazide diuretics also help preventing calcium stones and soda bicarbs, sodium bicarbonate is also used to reduce the formation of calcium stones. When these measures do not work, then some sort of interventional treatment will be required. A couple of decades ago, most kidney stones would have required an open cut on the tummy to remove the stones. However, these days, 
Open operations are quite uncommon. Most kidney stones can be removed using lithotripsy, which is shock wave, a sound wave given from outside, which hit the stone and break the stones. And the smaller stones are much easier to pass or they can be removed with a camera. Percutaneous nephrolithotomy, again a small tunnel operation done through the back. So a little hole made under general anesthetic in the back and through which instruments can be passed and the stones can be removed. Uretroscopy, which is again a camera test done from down below. And the camera is passed up into the ureter and instruments can be passed through that camera to remove the stones. As they say, prevention is better than cure. Drinking plenty of water, reducing weight, regular exercise, balanced diet, not eating excessive of certain things, keeping our urine acidic by drinking lemon juice, ginger ale, lime juice, etc. will all go towards preventing kidney stones. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, then please do give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I shall see you soon. Until next time, take care.